All right, so in this tutorial, I'll give you guys some tips on um, shading like uh, mouth expressions. Um, I guess before I begin, I will explain a couple things about the mouth. Um, <clears throat> the mouth is an interesting feature of the face in that um, it projects from the face, and sometimes getting the expression right has nothing to do, well, doesn't have everything to do with the lips, but sometimes the creases or the um, the form surrounding it because you know it's it's projecting forward and it has um, this whole network of muscles surrounding it you know so you have the um, you know the opening you know and uh, you have these um, muscles around it and then you have all these extended muscles that pulls it in all kinds of directions so the thing is these muscles as a result um, create surface forms and the surface forms are what we observe as you know well the creases are indication of those the um, those you know muscles and so on that's pulling and twisting the mouth in all kinds of shapes and stuff so a lot of times when you're drawing the um, the mouth you have to pay attention to the little creases and so on and also the the type of um, balance and values that you use so especially with pen and ink it's a little tricky so what I did here is I have a neutral mouth expression here I have like a little uh, snare or snicker here it's like you know it's drooping and here it's smiling so it's the opposite direction and I'll just go through each one you know so you can get an idea all right so this one is just like a neutral expression so and it's always good to practice having a frame of reference whether literally there or in your mind it's, that's why sometimes you know ha knowing proportions is good um, not just to memorize how to draw something but because um, you're using it as a frame of reference so you know you know for example you know if someone has relatively a big nose if you have an idea of what the average size nose looks like okay so um, you know with someone with with regular lips like this you know, if you know if someone has unusually thin lips or even fuller lips, you can know how to capture that, especially if you're going for likeness, okay? Because likeness is just a matter of capturing how someone deviates from what we accept to be a norm, all right? So with just drawing the the, the um, lip, and I'm not going to um, over render this. I'm just going to try to keep it as simple as possible, just to focus on the basics. Now, some key things to note about the neutral lip. Or neutral mouth is that um, see it's pretty there's no you know pulling or anything the general line between the lips is you know something like that all right and you have to be careful of the dimple at the corner of the the, the mouth because that can indicate an expression um, unintentionally now if you notice I drew the line between the lips but I didn't draw a line at the upper lip because in truth there isn't really a a line there Okay, that's a line. It's just really a, a, a change in value that we see. But we generally do it because it's, you know, it's easier to do. But what really happens at the, um, the rim of the lips is really like a, like a tube, if you will. Something like that. I'm just exaggerating it here. You know, but it's, it's, it's like that. All right, so what, what we see as a line is really just a shadow on the underside. And right above here is where, you know, that little crease at the upper lip. And then there's a little um, indentation right there. All right. So this helps to reinforce the um, the fullness of the lips as well. All right. So instead of putting a line there, just, just lightly put some stipples. And then now I'm just going to um, use some hatch lines just to indicate the upper lip. And also the lo the local value of the upper lip is generally a little bit um, deeper in value than the local value of the uh, the lower lip. It appears darker, right? So these lines are not really indicating light and shadow. They're just separating the local value of upper lip from the lower lip. Now, if I wanted to indicate some shadow, then you know the the sides of the the lips are generally darker. Because it's it's almost like um, it's like this. Yeah, so it's almost like the lips are which because in truth, the lips are really just the inner mouth turned outwards. OK, it's averted. So basically the corners of the mouth or the upper lips 
are always darker because this is where the lip is about to curve under into the mouth, all right? So it's almost like there's a shadow here and then it gets lighter as it curves over, all right? Like that. And here it's curving under. So, um, and then sometimes you'll notice, depending on how full the person's lips are, you'll find that sometimes it will even curve all the way over and sometimes it won't, all right? So you'll see, it depends on how full it is, you'll see a different, different amount of um, shadow right here, all right? Nonetheless, this line, it should be really deep because it's a crease that goes into an orifice where the, you know, inside the mouth is. Yeah, and, and right above this, see, I didn't make a line at the top and I'll just use the crease, you know, right where the, the upper, the middle of the, um, See, so it's almost like the light is coming from the upper right. So the shadow is on this side and not on that side, all right? So this is a neutral um, mouth. Now with the lower lip, sometimes you'll notice this little, um, a little ridge right here. And the, it's almost like the shadows of the, the lower lip will form above it like so. And this, this form, this, this fleshy form under the lips is what kind of like supports it. All right. It curves. It's almost like it curves. Um, okay. I'll just simplify it. It's like that's the lips and it goes like this. Uh, All right. All right. So the lip is the lip is almost like being supported by this fleshy mass, and it's almost always in shadow, and naturally so because it's facing downwards. All right. And see this little crease I made here that just indicates you know that little fleshy point at the corners of the lips where all these muscles are joining, especially like the muscle that pulls the lips into a smile, they form a little lump right here. And you'll see that in just about everyone. So that's all this is indicating. And I just used a little, you know, it's almost like a little form like that. So I'm really just using little lines to indicate that, all right? And uh, yeah, I think this is about it. I won't necessarily go any deeper in terms of, you know, any more cross hatching because you can pretty much feel the form. Um, what you often find is like because the upper lip casts a shadow onto the it's it's projecting over the lower lip. Sometimes you'll find a little cast shadow onto the uh, the lower lip. You see, and that is a sharp line. All right, and that's enough, I think, um, to indicate that. So now, uh, which one? This, all right, let's go to this one. One thing that's very important, you have to make sure you note that, see, there is a little stretching of the lips because the lip, lips are very elastic, right? It stretches really easily. So some of the things that you have to make sure you note is the fact that, you know, this is stretched out, see? And the creases, all these creases are indicating the tension of the muscles pulling that side of the lips, you know, to um, to the right. And this crease will be pretty prominent. And see, and that is very important for also reinforcing that, that movement. This side is, is, it has to be pretty relaxed. So I'm just going to go in and do the, um, the line work on this. It's going to put in little creases here. So this side of the of the mouth is pretty relaxed. This one is pulled upwards, right? So there's a little crease. These creases you're seeing are the muscles pulling it to that side. And if you notice with the teeth, I didn't um, draw the line between them. And that's generally a rule that uh, I think is useful to follow. 
you don't draw the teeth like you know literally how they appear like that you know because then they they kind of look funny all right and of course the mouth is open so inside is in is in shadow I'm just using hatch lines to indicate that i make the lower the lower teeth is kind of like in shadow because it's behind well i'm saying it's behind so they don't show as strongly so i make the lines overlap them as well because i'm saying they're in shadow corners of the mouth are always you know pretty much pitch dark and if you notice I'm using the um, the lines to kind of accentuate the curvature of the lips Again, it gets darker to the sides. It gets lighter as it comes to the front. Now, see, I put some little lines at the sides of the teeth because the teeth is really like, you know, curving around like so. All right. It curves around away from us. So as it goes around, there's shadow, and then it comes into the light. Then it goes back into shadow as it turns away from us, All right? So that's pretty much why I put these lines at the sides. And you could also um, put some, some little lines just at the top. This is to mark where, you know, the cast shadow cast by the lips onto the teeth below it. Or you could even put a, because I see the teeth look pretty white, you could even put a slight layer of hatch marks over it. You could say that it's, you know, the mouth is not completely open. All right. So again, see that this little, you know, shadow here is because of the muscles pushing up on the um the lower lip. All right, so see, there's a little a little crease is very important, and these little forms are very important also for um, you know, reinforcing that feel that the the, the lips are being pulled to that side. All right, so let's do the um one at the top, and we'll just do the smile afterwards. All right, so <clears throat> with this one, um, you know. The, the corners are being pulled down to the sides. So again, you know, the notice the top of the lip is stretched out similar to this compared to the neutral expression. So you, that's one thing you have to keep in mind because our natural tendency is to draw the lips the way we normally see it in a neutral position at all times. So even when you're drawing a smile, you have to remind yourself not to, you know, you have to make the changes that are consistent with a smile and not with a neutral expression, all right? So the top of the lip is stretched out naturally because the corners are being pulled down. And this little V is also wider. It's not like this. It's more like, like this, you know, the lips are being pulled in a, in a taut position.
Again, you make the line between the lips pretty strong. Yeah, you will barely see the crease up here because the, the top of the lip, you know, the skin above the, 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 the teeth is being pulled taut. So this may barely be visible, you know, it may be like that. See what I mean? Because it's being pulled really tight. And the lip, the lip, the lower lips will be thinner and wider. So there won't be much fullness to it. See, and I'm making this line pretty bold to, you know, accentuate that. Now, these creases are very important. See, and this, this right here is going to the fold between Right here, this is going to the fold between the um, the cheeks and the nose, and that's very important because that crease gets really deep because the flesh is being it's like it's folding over like that because it's being pulled. See, so it would be like this. So all these fleshy forms, I'm just seeing them like like little tubes, like um, like this. You know, the flesh is. Like that. All right, so that's why I just draw the little lines because it's indicating the, the, the roundness and the fullness of that form right there. So you normally have a sort of balling of the um, of the chin because the skin is being pulled over it, and uh, all you see are these little creases. Because whenever you see the crease, it pretty much indicates the tension of the muscles underneath. Then that's the the muscles are being pulled taut, you know. So the little creases you see are the muscles being pulled. So that's why sometimes knowing a little anatomy is is useful because it helps you to explain or understand what you're seeing, see? And you know, that, that pretty much gives the idea. See, so, you know, this crease is, is pretty strong. And this skin area, see there's no, notice there's no lines here because the skin is being pulled pretty taut over the teeth, all right? And you, you'd have to make sure the crease between the lips is really strong. Like really, you know, bold and sharp to reflect the tautness of the muscles. The mouth shouldn't look relaxed. See, I notice the line is pretty straight. You know, and here they see the curve. It's more curved. Even here it's more curved. Here it's just really straight because it's being pulled taut. All right. Okay, so um, let's move to the uh, the smile. Um, now, some key things. The smile. I think the same principles that apply here apply uh, that apply here apply with the smile. It's just in the opposite direction. However, you see, notice this fold is pretty strong. That crease is not as visible anymore. What you have now is more a, um, a swelling of the cheeks because what happens when a smile is that the muscle that's attached to the corner of the lips pulls the corners up towards the cheek bone, all right? So that little bone like that. So it's basically contracting. And as it contracts, all the flesh is gathering up so the cheek swells all right so that's what's really happening so that's why whenever you have a smile it it doesn't go just to the side it goes up because it's pulling the, the corners of the of the um the mouth upwards so let's do the outline here All right, so basically what you're seeing here, again, is that um, 
So you, you'll find that the, mus the muscles or the skin over the chin is being pulled up with the corners of the lips. So as well, you also see like this, this tautness over the chin. You'll also see it here because the flesh is being pulled upwards. See, it's being pulled up. Now, again, the, the, this little groove, that little V, right between the, um, the center of the lip is going to be pretty taut. It's not as, as relaxed as this. It's being pulled outwards. So that little crease that we normally see at the top of the, um, the upper lip will, if, if even, it will barely be there. All right? So it's really light because the lips are being pulled out. And again, the lips are pretty taut. There's not much curvature there. And you'd have to make sure that, you know, the corners are always higher. And there's a little dark area at the corners of the, um, of the lips. So I always use these lines just to indicate the, the local value of the upper lip. And again, I'm going to strengthen the crease of the line between the lips. Make it really bold, especially at the corners. Because this is where, you know, the cheeks swell up. And you'll notice that it will vary from, you know, person to person. But for the most part, it's principle is pretty much the same in terms of, you know, what happens. Because essentially, we all have the same anatomy. See, and this, this is the same fold here. It's just as strong. Only the skin is being pulled to the side and up instead of down. You know, and see, you can you can use different lines to shade here. Here I'm using lines that go with the form. Here I used more lines that were like fanning away, that were like radio. You know, so. It's an example of how you can, you know, just experiment with different lines or different strokes. See, and notice the lips, there's not as much, uh, you know, texture or whatever or lines on the, on the lower lip because it's being pulled outwards, right? You see, these, these creases are just indications of the, um, you know, the forms of the, the muscles being pulled all the way from the chin. See, so this is another example of, of, of making sure that, you know, everything smiles, not just the lips smiles, the creases smile, the cheeks smile, the eyes smile, the nose, everything has to, you know, that's just the way the body works. Everything is in sync with the movement. Otherwise, it would be pretty confusing expression. You know, unless that's the effect you want to create. That's why sometimes, you know, you can easily indicate, you know, a fake smile because only the person's mouth is smiling. The rest of their face is, is not consistent with that action. You know, that's why we can say, oh, that person's not Jimmy, because he says that, you know? Yeah. Yeah, that's pretty much it. Um, so, you know, those are just basic things to keep in mind, you know, when you're um, drawing the lips. Um, be very familiar with the neutral expression of the lips so that whenever it's not in a neutral position, you can compare to that. For example, you know, like, if, so for example, like when someone's pouting, you know, like, like they're blowing a kiss or something, the muscles around are contracting around the lips, so it pushes it together. So that means the corners of the lips would be closer inside, okay? If someone is pouting, it has to be because, in, in, you know, so you have to make sure you, you be consistent with those things. And those are the things that bring about realism, right? Um, and if the person is smiling, the corners of the lips has to be, well, should be higher and wider. And the, the lips should thin out and this, the, this little groove will be wider. All right. Those are the little things you pay attention to.